genuine learning come moments so profound that in their new luminosity they touch a deep chord, stir something ineffably transcendent, and connect us with a force more powerful that resonates with the community for decades to come. For Lady Sri Ram College, today is one such edifying moment a moment of celebration, a moment of reflection, a moment of reminiscence and inspiration, a moment of mindfulness, a deeply emotional moment. Today we celebrate a unique individual whose serene power has left its imprint on the warp and weft of the consciousness of this institution, an abiding presence, deeply proximate in its impact. Aung San Suu Kyi has returned home today to an extended family that has waited for nearly two and a half decades in longing and anticipation. The country recently celebrated Diwali, the Festival of Lights, that symbolically represents a majestic homecoming and also the triumph of righteousness. LSR celebrates its special Diwali today. <laughs> Ever since the day in, in the August of 1988, when Aung San Suu Kyi kindled hope for human rights, justice, and democracy in the people of her country, with her rousing speech from the Shwedagon Pagoda that catapulted her into politics, the college community has rejoiced in her every success her every triumph. We have walked with her in our mind's eye through tortuous paths and emphasized in her moments of personal and political struggle. We have prayed for her safety and victory. We have felt her pain. The many images of the tapestry of her journey from then on are deeply etched on the canvas of our institutional history and memory. Her cosmopolitan spirit combining deep pride in the best traditions of her beloved country, an unusual blend of East and West intellectually and spiritually, the longi and the flowers in her hair, which all students have worn today, <laughs> her staunch adherence to the principles of ahimsa under the most brutal of provocations, the isolation of over 15 years of house arrest, her deep study as a Buddhist, into the nature of dukkha or human suffering. Her turning, her 
and forced solitude into a space for spiritual rejuvenation, her adherence to the principles of dharma and of hayat, the humility that has accompanied her many awards from the Sakharov of Prize for Freedom of Thought in 1990, the Jawaharlal Nehru Peace Prize in Course, the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991, and the Congressional Gold Medal, the United States, among several other honors. Of the erstwhile prisoner of conscience, who gives voice and hope to the oppressed and subjugated and marginalized the world over. Of the intrepid champion of human rights, freedom, and democracy. Of the engaged Buddhist, who sees the interconnectedness of all sentient beings and envisions a world, and I quote, of which each and every corner is a true sanctuary where the inhabitants will have the freedom and the capacity to live in peace, and where we can sleep in security and wake in happiness. Of her articulation of a kinder world, where the ethics of care recognize that the peace of our world is indivisible, end quote of the wavering comfort and support of the unique bond she, she shared with her late husband, the remarkable Dr. Michael Arif, of the difficult, sometimes painful choices between family and country, of the legendary facing down of armed soldiers poised to shoot at Danube, where she looked fear in the face and never looked back, her courage during the ruthless military-sponsored attack on her convoy at the Bayin, where several of her supporters were killed. Her cautioning her supporters to desist from populist fanfare after her victory at the hustings. Her sagacity in advocating the middle path, her equanimity following her recent successes, and above all, offering her support to assist in processes of national reconciliation to contain the fissures that have arisen in contemporary Burma. Through all of this, Aung San Suu Kyi, in Let Me Do Two's words, and I quote, while being petite and elegant in physical stature, has remained a giant in moral stature. For us at El Azhar, these have been metaphors for leadership that offers an alternative, a more inclusive vocabulary of power for a world waiting to be born. They highlight the courage and resilience that women can bring into the public sphere. Our motif today, as you will all see, is the lotus. The lotus in Indian, Burmese, and Buddhist iconography transcends the immediate to unfold and touch the awakening ray. Aung San Suu Kyi, like the lotus, opens a new horizon to the human spirit. Thousands of full hearts, ma'am, in, are in unison today. They speak, they connect with you, the Hagnir, for new morn. Now the students of Lady Sri Ram wish to convey this sentiment with music. Tagore had said, if they answer not your call, walk alone. With the thunder flame of pain, ignite your own heart and let it burn there if need be. Magnificent, alone. The students add, inspired by you, having a new morn. Walk on. We are co travelers, kindred spirits, so never stop. The path is not easy. Let our faith in you be ever the spur. New energies are released, new dreams soar. Oh, the joy that sacrifice brings. We follow the clarion call, the journey awakens, new horizons beckon, the sky and the earth are renewed. Walk on, walk on, walk on, having a new morning. 